Today we're going to be replacing the machine heads. This is the acoustic guitar that I bought 32 years ago when I suffered a broken back and wanted to get back into music and more into guitar playing. And this is the guitar that I taught myself how to play guitar on with a few instructional books and then going straight into playing along with some of my favorite bands at the time, like Nirvana, for example. So let's get into it and take a look at replacing the tuning pegs on a 32-year-old $200 guitar at the time. And these are some relatively nicer tuning pegs because I've become quite fond of this guitar and I like to use it for special tunings or alternate tunings, if you will. So let's see how this goes. These are the machine heads or tuning pegs that I will be using today. I'll show you in a moment, but on the old guitar, they were the cheap plastic knobs on the end and those over time, especially over 32 years, will crack and start to come apart. So you start pulling them off and putting them on the other one that broke. So you can just tune multiple strings with this, essentially the same knob, if you will, on the end of the tuning peg. And that's just getting old. And I also am looking for more consistent tuning on this guitar because I really do enjoy keeping it in those alternate tunings. I bought them for the, the quality, the all steel construction and the precision tuning. So these have a very nice um, tight but not too tight feel and the gearing appears to be very precision oriented in the in the movement that I can see by, by turning the knob. So let's go ahead and start getting these on. I haven't even seen it come around yet actually. Let's see. I'll go ahead and twist it fast. Let's see if you can see uh, we go so yeah that's it just coming around there and the lockers in now so I can see why you can't see through the hole there let me back the locker out and so you can now see through that hole although you probably do not enough light to see my finger perhaps through the hole um, but these appear to be high quality and lockers are just a nice little bonus I didn't even realize they had them on there when I bought them but these will be the ones that we'll be using today. So let's get into it. Going ahead and removing the strings. And we're gonna remove them by cutting them since they're a very old set of strings. Next up, we're simply going to take the strings, each of them one by one, and unwind them from the head and just pull them out like this and go ahead and safely remove all the strings. We want to go ahead and take advantage of the strings being off and clean not only the body of the guitar and all the way around, but especially the fretboard and go ahead and give it some polish there. So with the microfiber cloth now, we'll take a moment to apply some guitar polish and cleaner and simply use a microfiber cloth to clean the guitar. Just to demonstrate the guitar polish, you really don't want to use a ton of polish unnecessarily so what we want to do is spray the polish not on the guitar but actually on the cloth so we'll just give it about two to three sprays okay first one was a little bit of a dud so it's really more like two two squirts and we'll just kind of start um, massaging the body here to start get the, get the polish coming back there so I can already tell, and I'm not sure well, how well that shows up on camera, but when you look at this area versus the rest of the guitar, it's just a night and day difference. So I'm going to go ahead and get some work done, go ahead and get the, these strings pulled out here, the base of the strings, and we'll move to the next stage. Now that we have the strings completely removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the old machine heads so that we can effectively clean the entire guitar. Uh, so I'd be lying if, if, uh, if I didn't say I was a little bit nervous about this. Um, of course, you can see the condition of the current pegs. I'm missing two knobs. This one is just hanging on by a thread. One of them on this side is, is this one is uh, cracked. So really, this is why I'm doing this today. And also to get just a much higher quality tuning peg or machine heads because I do think that's going to bring a lot of benefit to this guitar. It plays great and it's fun to do experimental stuff on, but 
it's just a pain in the butt to have to take these off and then move it to another one to tune it and then pull it off and stick it on another one knowing that it could fall off uh, at any time. So the thing that worries me, and I'm not sure if this will pick up well on camera, is the actual uh, screws themselves on some of these caps look to be in pretty bad shape. So cross your fingers, guys. Hopefully this these will come off easily. If not, we might have to take a different approach. So now moving into the phase of removing the old machine heads from this acoustic guitar. A little disclaimer, I'm not a luthier. I don't pretend to be one. This is a $200 guitar from 30 years ago. So just understand that as I'm working on this, this is a hobby for me. It's just a, an old piece of musical equipment that I really enjoy to play and, and like. So I'm just trying to give it some love. So. Just understand that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just having fun here. So I want to show what I was talking about here. This particular screw, which I'm sure you can't really see the threads uh, or the actual engagement of the Phillips head screwdriver there very well, uh, looks to be in one of the better conditions. So in an attempt to go ahead and pull this one out, I'm going to give that a little bit of downward pressure. Just a simple turn there. And we can see this one really appears to be super sweet and simple. And this process will be repeated for all of the screws holding these caps on because this is one of those styles where they are not exposing the gears and it's also not a self-contained um, uh, unit like the new tuners are. So that's what we'll be doing. And again, I'm a little worried on some of them that they could strip out but let me get into that and let's see what happens i'll give you guys an update in just a moment okay well so far so good now we still have five more to go but just wanted to show you guys what it looks like the initial one's out this is what this particular tuner looks like so once i pulled the two oops let me get in frame once i pulled the two screws from either side of this cap i was literally able to just slide it out so they're not locked into the the head of the guitar the way that the new ones will be which is actually through the the thickness of the guitar it bolts on the other side so again cheaper components um, you can even see once I took the cap off the gearing is quite large makes me curious to see what the gearing would look like in the ones I have now but I'm sure I'm assuming they're much finer gears than what's in here the overall construction on these just feels pretty cheap right uh, especially as compared to something like this, which uh, just the weight of it, the heft, and the construction overall just feels superior. Okay, we have good news and then just a little challenge that I don't think will be too bad here. So all the old machine heads are now off the guitar. All the original tuning pegs, so off the relatively cheap like we said but boy the, they worked great over the years and besides having to kind of retune it a little bit more than you should and whatnot and then of course ultimately the uh the knobs breaking and kind of falling off they've been good to me and so we're left with a bare headstock here um, we'll need to clean this up obviously when we clean the whole guitar we'll get some of this crud off of here it's just dust at this point and then um get it polished and nice. But I wanted to show one ch the challenge that we have had, which is I kind of expected this to a certain extent, but these new tuners, if you look at them, you'll notice that the base of it is, is pretty wide. Now, let me get one of these tuners here for comparison. And so if you look at this tuner compared to the new one, you can see that that wide section is not there on the old tuners. So what I'm going to need to do is a little bit of uh, basic woodworking to get these to properly fit the hole here. So you can see uh, at an angle here, if I take one of the new ones, this is one of the new ones, and I go into, let's say, this particular hole, it seats, but then there's about you know, this much left for it to really fully be seated. So I'm going to do some woodworking. I'm not going to film that because it's 100 degrees outside and I don't really even want to go outside today, honestly. 
but I would like to get this job done. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that off camera and we'll be back soon as we can. Okay. Update some good news here. So what I just discovered, and it was a little hard to tell because there was some built up kind of, uh, I guess like wood filler material that kind of looks like sawdust in each of the holes that appeared to make it look like there was a recess and then solid wood with a smaller hole that would be optimized for this. And that's partially what it was. However, it wasn't wood. It's actually just a press in that actually fits that portion perfectly. So what they did is they took it, I guess the standard sized hole for the tuning pegs there and they developed they were using these cheaper ones so they just used this plastic uh, I guess bushing or whatever you would call this that also is has a essentially like a, a washer attached to the top now I'm, I'm not sure if that's glued on or what but it's it's in there and so I didn't think about that because I hadn't turned the guitar over yet, but this is really good news. I don't have to go out into the 100 degree weather after all. I just need to take, and I can actually use the new ones to push out these bushings from each of the holes. I could use the same one over and over, whatever, but this is really good news. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one of them and I'm going to go ahead and take care of the rest of it uh, just to have this part taken care of. Show it quickly how we remove these, we just put in the new ones and we can push the old ones out just like that. We're going to go ahead and get the rest of these popped out, these little plastic bushings here, and then we'll move to the next step. We have them all removed. We have a nice clean hole all the way through now. Now, before I start the actual polishing of the guitar, what I want to do is just take a fiber cloth that's been dampened, but then wrung out pretty well so that I can just remove the any of the excess dirt and grime so that the cleaner and polish is not having to do that heavy work uh, with a dry rag because that can actually cause damage in some cases. So again, just taking a nice clean microfiber cloth here uh, that has just a little, little bit of dampness to it to help remove some of the excess. Another thing I like to do when I'm cleaning acoustic guitars, especially extensively like this, is to go ahead and clean the back first, then the sides, and then flip it over so that you can clean the top last because that's where we're gonna be doing the work. So going ahead and clean the back, which is obviously the, e it's the biggest part, but it's also the easiest part because there's no interference here with any other uh, knobs or strings or bridge sticking out. So I'm just kind of going over it I can see, I'm sure this isn't showing up on camera perfectly, but as I'm looking, I'm catching different angles of light to look to see what's being removed there. So after a few circular patterns, I'm going to now go with the, the grain of the wood just to kind of give it a look here. And honestly, I'm happy with the back of the guitar like that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this process, moving up the headstock, cleaning the back of the headstock, which is pretty dirty and then moving to the sides of the guitar. And now just wrapping it up by giving this a good wipe first to get the excess stuff off there. Looking good. Take a different section of the cloth here and give it another hit. I can already see here that the imprint of the caps of the old tuners is probably going to still be visible if it's not covered by the new tuner um, and that's okay with me. I did keep the old hardware too because in case one of the holes is still exposed after installing the new tuners I might just opt for placing the screw back in the exposed hole to prevent it from having just an open hole. So to be perfectly honest after doing the cleaning with the damp cloth and very lightly damp cloth, I might add. The guitar looks pretty great for being over 30 years old. However, I'm still gonna do the polish to bring out that additional shine. So Dunlop 65, this formula number 65, guitar polish and cleaner. Get a bottle of this and it'll last you for a long time, unless you just clean a lot of guitars. And we're gonna spray it again, not on the guitar, but on the cloth. Okay. Got three good sprays that time, so we're going to go straight to the back. 
and we're going to go ahead and just start massaging this polish in which will give us some additional cleaning as well and then you may notice some some things uh, residually kind of look for the different angles of light and pretty soon you'll see it turn from a, a haze into just a well as clear as it's going to be and I'm going to flip the cloth to get a little bit of a dry section here a drier section to give it that final polish and honestly I'm surprised the back of this isn't beaten up more but it's because I intentionally would not play it with like on a belt buckle or anything like that I generally do this with all my guitars. I try not to let them rub against something harsh, which can really scar up the back of the guitar. So we finished up the cleaning and polishing of the back of the headstock. Try to give you guys some different angles here. Um, but it really turned out really good uh, for what I, from what I was expecting. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, of course, the back is rest as the rest of it has been clean as well. The top part of the back is probably where there's the most rubbing, but as you come back to the back, it's it's actually quite quite clear, almost mirror-like. So, I mean, you can literally see my ceiling quite well in the reflection of the back of the guitar. So it's held up really well over, over the past three decades. To, to come out this well, for me, now that I bring it back at a distance, uh, I, I really like this. Now, for those that are curious just what in the world this guitar actually is, I want to give you a little glimpse inside so that you can actually see for yourself. Now, the front of the guitar itself is uh, with the beautiful gray starburst is not in that bad a condition. Now, I haven't cleaned it yet, so I'm just showing you before I clean it to see the some of the smudges and just grime fingerprints, whatnot, that's built up over the past several years since I probably cleaned it last. Probably been five years, if I had to guess. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, I have replaced also with, on the bridge, so we do new, have a new uh, bone piece in here. Um, that one's been modified specifically for this guitar. So we're back now. I actually took a little bit of a break there. It's today's Father's Day and my oldest daughter took me out to have Mexican food which was really good. Uh, so I kind of laid the microfiber and the polish and cleaner out to go ahead and pick back up where I left off which was to go ahead and clean the front of the guitar, work on the fretboard some and of course the, the headstock up here. Get this nice and cleaned up. Once we do the polishing and cleaning of all this, especially the fretboard, we'll do a little something special to the fretboard, and I'll show you guys that in just a moment. So I'm gonna give it a few sprays. So I got three good sprays there. Again, we're working with a lot of body here, and I'm gonna bring this front and center, and then we just kind of start working it in and start giving it that uh, that polish and that mis that cleaning here. And already, I mean, the the bottom half of the guitar already looks way better just with that minimal cleaning. And one thing I forgot here, guys, actually, is we can still take our dampened cloth, which um, honestly, it's not really damp anymore. Um, but we could do that and do that method with the front as well. Uh, I'm going to opt to skip that step. And since most of this on the front has gotten some touches is more finger print adjacent um, the deeper grime and stuff I don't think is as much of a problem up here but we want to make sure you clean really good especially in areas where the strings will usually be covering that area and that way you're not um, putting yourself in a bad position by cleaning the guitar and replacing the machine heads, polishing it up, putting the strings back on, and then realizing you missed a spot that's like under where the strings go anywhere on the fretboard or even on the body. It's just harder to clean under there. You can, of course, but it's just a little more difficult. 
So make sure to think about that while the strings are off. And we'll go ahead and repeat the process that we just did on the front of the body for the fretboard. A few sprays and we'll start cleaning that off. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and just wipe down the headstock. You might be able to see a little dust and grime there. So we're just going to go ahead and get that cleared up some. And similar to what we did on the back, uh, any of the kind of roughness around the holes is going to be covered by those new tuners anyway. So we're not too worried about that. Uh, and you want to get to a little bit of a drier part of the cloth to kind of, you're almost buffing it out because it's a combination cleaner and polish. So that looks good to me. So um, the way I'm going to clean polish the fretboard would be very similar to taking a more focused area and maybe use my finger to kind of come across here. Just give that some, some love. It's not going to really change a lot in terms of the look because that's just the way these things wear in however what it's doing is it is removing unnecessary oils or grease buildup that we don't want to be sitting on this material especially before uh, what we're going to do next because we want to control oil is not a bad thing for your fretboard but we want to control that and we want to make sure that the type of oil that we're using is optimized for that so you can already see a little bit of it's the first time we're actually seeing evidence on the microfiber cloth of some grime being removed whereas with the rest of the guitar you just weren't seeing that so we're going to kind of alternate sections with our finger and continue to apply just a little spray or two as we move down each set of three or four frets to ensure that we're not missing anything and so i'm doing two things i'm cleaning within the fret but I'm also cleaning the, on the fret and trying to kill, use my fingernail to kind of clean just lightly on each side of it and the fret itself. So it gives it a little bit of a clean and a polish and again gets that oil and debris and gunk off of there as well. So I'm going to continue working on this for a while and then we will pick up on the next step. All right, so... Kind of finished up on the fretboard with the cleaner and polisher. Looks pretty good in my opinion. I think it came out uh, as good as it could. But now we're going to use a little something different on the fretboard. Now that we cleaned it and polished it. And that's again this is the 65. But th and this time it's the ultimate lemon oil. Which is specifically for fretboards. And this is something that I generally would use and apply after I have gone through and cleaned and polished it because you don't really want to oil something that still has residual grime and oils and especially from your hands over a long period of time built up underneath it. So that's why you want to clean it first. So let's go ahead and give this some application. I like to give it a little bit of a, a shake, kind of get it moving around. This stuff sits around for a while in between usage. So we're going to shake the bottle well. Shake ASMR. Okay. And then um, we're going to apply just a small amount to the frets using the Dab-O-Matic applicator. And the Dab-O-Matic applicator is actually, if you just take the lid off, it's this nice little cotton area right there, which... Uh, it's kind of like a felt tip pin, if you will, but a very big version to where this tip, this applicator, will allow a little bit of oil to come through so that we can apply it. So we'll start up high on the fretboard, and I'm just going to lightly brush this on. I'm not really using the tip for anything more than applying the oil. And then we're going to come behind this with a, another uh, microfiber and kind of wipe the excess off. And also, you want to, to a certain extent, kind of polish the oil, if you will, to, to uh, help it bond with the fretboard and work it into the actual wood itself. All right. 
It looks pretty good. So hopefully you get a good idea of how this starts. This one actually is, I don't know if it's because it's setting for so long, but it's quite moist. Generally, I don't see that much oil come out, but that's okay. Because we're going to, again, use microfiber to come back and work that in even better. And it, that's when we'll remove the excess. So for now, I'm going to put the cap uh, back on this, start working on this and uh, then we'll continue down the rest of the fretboard and I'll check in with you guys in just a moment. Okay, so now that we have the oil all the way up and down the fretboard, I've gone ahead and started just with the first fret, but I, I realized I do want to show this just to see my process and it, in case it helps anyone with how they would uh, work the oil in themselves. For one, you kind of want the oil to sit on there for just at least a few, uh, you know, two to three minutes to let it do its natural permeation. You don't want to just get it on there, apply it, and immediately, you know, try to, you're not wiping it off anyway. You're kind of, again, you're working the oil in, but you're removing excess oil. So to illustrate that, I've already done the first fret. I'm just taking a fresh spot of the microfiber cloth, a clean one, and I'm going to go into the oil here, which hopefully you can see on camera there's a decent amount in this space here so I'm just going to kind of slowly come in and start working that in and then give it some different range of motion there making sure I'm getting all the crevices and again you can lightly use your fingernail to make sure that the oil is getting all the way into the corners so now kind of the first two frets are being worked together and this is the process we're going to do. We'll go ahead and do the third fret and then we'll cut the camera for a minute while I finish the rest and we'll pick up on the next step. So again, let's move to the third fret here. It's really amazing seeing the difference between what it looked like when we pulled the strings off and then the the difference between that and then with the polish and now with the actual lemon oil applied and buffed out it really makes a big difference and it really refreshes the look of a guitar but it also helps keep the wood healthy and now after getting through with the removing it of excess oil but also massaging it into the fretboard all the way from top to bottom we're finished and just a quick kind of glance at what that looks like the shadow comes up to display what he looks like hey shadow shadow let's not eat the guitar please so we'll go ahead and set this down looks like i've got a new helper here so i think at this point we're going to go ahead and move into installing the, the new machine heads into the the head of the guitar and then we'll take a look at it and see if we're ready to go ahead and put the new strings on all right so i brought you a little closer in uh, for this shot so we can get this framed up a little bit better for you take a look at the the headstock there trying to just get different angles of light so you can see how it turned out and I'd say it looks pretty good. I wanted to show a quick technique that I use with uh, digital calipers. First off, let's see what the thickness is at the base right up at the head. So we're looking at a 1.75. So we have a 5 64ths here. And if we read that, I'm going to read it not on the drill side, but actually on the base first, similar to how we did the screw. And I'm reading a 1.95. So we're going to look at the 1 16th, uh, make sure it's zeroed out. I notice, oh, I think that's good. Yeah, we're zeroed out. And on the base of the 1 16th, we're reading 1.58. This is the one I want to use. Okay, so to give a demonstration of how I'm leveling these, this is what I was referring to. So kind of bringing it up to the top now of the, the machine head itself to see how they're leveled. And in this one... I'm hoping you guys can kind of see this, but in this case, this is level on this side, but this one 
if you can see, has just a gap right here. And this gap is what I want to eliminate to get these both lined up perfectly. So I'm going to bring this one down just a little until that just matches up perfectly. And to do this, it's also good to point out, you need to turn your actual tuning knobs in a, in this case, vertical position so that it doesn't bump into your straight edge when you're doing this. This doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. So I'm gonna repeat this process for the rest of these. Okay, so we got the holes drilled or the set holes for the hardware, which we'll be using. And that will be this hardware right here. And then for the screw holes that were remaining and are exposed, such as this one right there, we'll be using the hardware from before to fill those in just to give it a nice finished look. All right, I thought I'd show just putting in a couple of these screws here. Got a better screwdriver now as well. A little better tip on it, which is pretty important with these small screws. You don't want to tighten these too much either. Just putting a little bit of pressure to get them in and then feel nice and snug. Yeah, that one's good and tight. This one, a tad more. And then we'll just repeat this process all the way up. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these in here. And then we'll get them snugged up a little bit. There's another one here. So we got it clamped down. I'm just going to lightly, literally like two fingers and a thumb. Just give it a little bit of tension. And then that's good. That's all you need to do. Uh, and as a reminder, I'm going to take these screws that I felt were the worst for wear of the six. And I'm going to put those in these holes that already exist from the old machine heads to just have something in that hole. I'm going to get, do the rest of that all the way up and down. Just wanted to show you guys uh, me seating those in there for the tabs. And these will really help protect from any unwanted rotation because these will be tightened down. I haven't tightened them down on the front fully yet. I've just hand tightened them with the 10 millimeter socket. But uh, after doing this, I'll go back and, and just snug those up just lightly, similar to how I'm doing this with a actual socket wrench. You gotta be really careful with that because it's got a ton of leverage and that'll have these things locked in there nice and tight the alignment looks pretty good as you can see uh, kind of check that throughout and that's what you're looking for you're looking for it not to rock and you're also looking for each individual one to be level or parallel with the, your straight edge i will point out that this digital caliper here is just the perfect width for this because it really just fits snugly right in there. So when it comes to using a straight edge, keep that in mind. Uh, something small would work better if you're using a thicker straight edge, like something like a, a ruler like this. You kind of have to um, angle it and that'll work, but it's just not, uh, it's a, you know, it's not as affirmative of a feeling because you're angled in there and you can see it's, you know, if I just breathe one way or the other, that can cause it to become loose. So if you're going to use something that doesn't go all the way down in there, like this particular straight edge, you might want to get a second set of hands, a friend or family member to help you with that part of it. So here's what we have now. We have the Machine heads installed. We have the screws in the tabs. We have the screws in the blank holes that were left from the old hardware. And it's all looking good to me. So one thing I'll need to do while I'm back here is go ahead and loosen these lockers so that we can install the string. So I'm gonna back these out because these lockers essentially press through the peg and up through the hole where the string goes through as to help lock. And I will mention 
while I have these up just real quickly on the specification side that these are precision 1 18th gear ratio with sealed lubrication, cast housing, and metal knobs. So it's very important to me to get metal knobs because that's what really happened with the old ones. They broke off. I'd still be using the old ones if the knobs were okay. The tuning wasn't great and it didn't hold a tune great, but it worked fine for me. So this is the real reason why I replaced this whole set is to get metal knobs. Um, but in doing so, I said, why not get a more precision level of tuning? And that also with more precision tuning, uh, you get heavy duty internal gear. It's just going to give you more precision. It's going to hold the tune better. And that's exactly what I was looking for. So I just wanted to share a couple of those specs with you and we'll get right back to it. Now I've just gone through and tightened these up with the 10 mil socket. I can't stress enough, especially if you're working on a older, cheaper guitar that's probably made with some softer wood. Be really careful and do not torque these too much or you're going to indent into your headstock here. And so after doing this work too, you're going to find that you want to come behind and kind of clear some of the fingerprints and smudges before we get to the next step, which is placing the strings on the guitar, installing them within the guitar. So that's what we're going to be moving to next with these Ernie Ball custom gauge strings. These are the 11s and we're going to go ahead and get set up to put those in now. So to be perfectly honest, this was never intended to be a video necessarily on how to string a guitar, but I figured I would include this section just for anybody who might need some information on how to string a guitar. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and take the 48, which will be the biggest string. I want to give you guys a good visual demonstration and these bigger strings are probably the best chance you have at actually seeing it on camera. So the way I generally like to do this is taking uh, the end of the string here, uh, which is just like this portion right here, and going ahead and popping that down in, in this case, in the first hole on that side, and taking your lock, and you want to look for the part of the lock that has a groove in it, if you have this style, because that groove is going to be where the string will ride in. And we'll press it in, and then as I'm pressing it in, I kind of hold up a little bit and then give it a nice press down. And now I have my low E string in place. Let's go ahead and do the next one just to look at that one as well. And once this all out, again, we'll take this end right here and we'll take another lock and actually replace these as well with the bridge just to freshen it up. So over the years, I've kind of done little tweaks to that but for the most part this guitar is very much still stock in the form that it was not that there's that much you can do to this guitar anyway but we'll go ahead and do the same process here placing the end in the hole finding the groove side you can stick your fingernail in it to know where that is and having that faced forward towards the string pushing down while giving it just a little upward pressure making sure it's in there good and now we got two strings in so I'm going to go ahead and do this for the other four strings and we'll check back in in just a moment. All right, so we have it to the point of having all of our strings locked in at the bottom, getting them tightened up and into a tuning position. As you can see, you can only really see the high E due to the reflection that's cast off the light. It is a very thin string and you don't want to put undue pressure on that. So we're actually just going to take all five strings that aren't the low E together and we're going to bring them over to the opposite side of the guitar from where we're going to tune and lock in the, the low E string. And so we're going to take that and ensuring that all the other strings are out of the way, which is why we pulled them to the other side. And we're going to go ahead and uh, what I like to do actually is get your your tuning peg set up to where you can run it from the inside 
out and it's already at a point to where it is somewhat turned, if you will, so that when running it in here, you can get it to a point to where you can go ahead and start locking it in and not have to do all that turning. When using these precision tuning uh, knobs as well, and these gears, especially the gears, it's good to have a tool like this handy for your cranking of the strings to get them cranked in. It's just going to save your hands and your fingers from doing a lot of uh, singular turning of a knob. This is kind of a rotational device that will work with a couple of different size knobs and it's just really nice to have one of these tools. You can also cut guitar strings with it. They're super cheap. You can pick them up on Amazon or at your guitar shop. Uh, but it's a good tool to have on hand. You want to have a couple of turns on each peg to help with the locking of the tuning itself. And, and just giving a little bit more that can wrap around there. So hopefully you can see that here. And then tightening it back, that's going to give us additional uh, space on that string. Okay, we're going to leave it right there because I like that. I'm actually getting enough around there to where I'm pretty happy with that. So now the string is winding down. So it's pulling it down as well as upward towards the peg. So going to go ahead and do this for the remaining strings and we'll check back in. Another quick tip as you're putting this in, I've got the, the lower through strings already on and just tighten enough to seat properly on the bridge and all the way up into here on the headstock. We have everything lined up, but you don't want to over tighten them at this point. As a matter of fact, you don't really want to tighten them any more than it takes to seat them in there. And it's perfectly normal to, when you put them in there, if you play it, you might even hear it drop tuning right at that moment because fresh strings take a little while to break in. So avoid the temptation to tune any string until you have all six of them strung and then you can begin the tuning process. Okay, so looking closer at the headstock now that we have the strings installed. A uh, couple of things I'll point out when you're stringing an acoustic like this. As you're stringing, these pins can, if you can see that one is a little bit more protruding than the other ones, they can pull up as you're tightening the string because the string is essentially kind of trying to pull tension on that and sometimes even the brass ring can get caught on the bottom. So whenever you're tightening, you may, while you're tightening, find yourself needing to come down and press down on these or after you've you've tightened it. Now in this case, what I mean by tighten is I've just put in tension. These are all very loose, uh, except for maybe yeah, the low E's even so loose it still has a rattle, but they're all pretty loose. They're not really tightened that much, but you'll want to make sure that you're pushing your pins in and keeping them nice and secure uh, during the tuning process. Uh, and or at least coming back after you've, uh, I said tuning, but the tightening process when you're first putting them in the stringing and make sure that they're all nice and flush and pushed down all the way. The other tip that I'll say is more in this area is ensure that you're not crossing strings when you're tightening them and finding out that after you've gotten it almost tightened that maybe this string is actually twisted around this string when you're tightening sometimes they tend to while they're loose catch another slot and then you tighten it and you think it's tight and then you see that the high e is really you know sitting in the g slot with the g string the last tip i'll say and you can kind of see it if i do an overview is when you're stringing a guitar you want the strings to be wound from the inside out so you're actually going counterclockwise on the left side for each of the strings and clockwise on the right side, if you're facing it the right side. So just some tips when you're stringing your guitar. On the lower strings, the thicker gauge strings, you can get away with fewer wraps. 
However, when you get to these, especially like the high E and really any of the strings, higher three strings here, you want to make sure to give them a couple extra wraps around the pegs. Just keep that in mind too. On the higher strings, you're going to want to make sure they have a couple extra wraps around the peg to ensure that they are locked in good and you don't have any uh, tuning problems there. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and put some tuning on the guitar. And then of course, you know, really play it a little bit, uh, but also letting it sit overnight, retuning it tomorrow, playing it some more and repeating that process throughout the week or really after maybe a couple of days, two or three days, this thing will start actually holding a tune. Uh, any new set of strings uh, will be that way. You can over tighten your strings a little bit. So tune them maybe up a note, up a half step or a full step from where you would normally tune it and then loosen it back down to pre-stretch. Um, I've done that before and I'm fine with that method too, but for this one, I just want to ease into it naturally. And so I'm just going to put a tuning on it, play it some and let it fall out, tune it again, and then let it sit for the night. And like I said, just kind of go through that process this week, giving it a uh, time to break in naturally. So let's go ahead and put the initial tune and let's see what it sounds like. All right. So we got the snark on nothing fancy this is not an expensive tuner at all then you can see it kind of picking up on some of the vibrations that's just because i'm speaking near the body of the guitar and it's uh, catching the tone of my voice so um, i've never been told i have perfect pitch but i think this is a pretty good confirmation of that <laughs> so jokes aside let's go ahead and get some tuning here uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and check this high E a little bit here. So we're already at a G on the high E, so let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit. So check that out. So you see that a minute ago it was hitting above the E. Now watch it. It's about three cents down. If I just went away for five minutes and came back, it'd probably be five to seven cents down. And that's just because the strings are breaking in. So we'll check it again. Just And it's just been the time that I've been talking. It's already dropped another cent, so it's about a full five cents down now, actually. So this is normal. And what I would recommend is don't just keep tuning one string and keep chasing the tuning because the tuning is going to change as you tune the other strings, too. Right. So now to kind of balance it out, I'm going to hop over to the low E and go ahead and give that some tuning. It's okay to tune it high because it's just going to drop three to five cents and probably five to seven cents uh, over time. And again, these other strings are going to uh, help with that drop too as we tune those. So I'm going to repeat this process uh, by going ahead and tuning the next string on the right side and then going over and doing the next one on the left side. And then do the last one on the right side and the last one on the left side. This ensures that we're always keeping somewhat even tension on the fretboard. So let's go ahead and do the next string, which is a B string. And this one is very loose right now. So let's, it's actually reading a B almost, uh, well, it's actually lower as a, a sharp. It's reading an octave down. So we need to really tune this one up. Boop, boop, boop. Didn't mean to hit the G string. Go 
gonna take it up a little higher because we know it'll drop. Okay, so that's a high, that's, you know, a few cents above a B. We'll leave it right there. And let's go ahead and hop over here and do the next one. <laughs> this one, it really doesn't even register as so low, so we really gotta get this one up. So this is the A string. Now here, did you, I don't know if you guys heard that little pop there, but if you hear any little pops, that's just the string adjusting as we're tightening it. You can also check the pins at the bottom, which I just did to make sure they're still seated properly. So there's our E. Look, our E has already dropped, even below tuning, uh, just through this. So let's bring the A. bring it up higher than an A too. This borderline A sharp, but that's fine. We'll leave it there. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and repeat that process on the top two and that'll give us our starting point. So I'm going to cut the camera off and finish this up and we'll go from there. Now, after getting the initial tune, and probably every string has already dropped back down below tuning by this point. I'm doing a little inspection and I'm revisiting my wraps on the tuning pegs. And what I notice is after tuning, I feel comfortable with uh, what we have in terms of the strings and how many coils we have around each one. So I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the excess string now that I feel good about uh, the, how it's installed here. And what that'll do is, I mean, some people leave it that way. Some people do little coils with them. I've done that before. Um, but I, I'm not a big fan of leaving them loose because it can just cause buzzing. There's guitars work off of vibration, right? So if these strings are overlapped and touching, for example, like that right there, while they're just kind of hanging out here, you get some buzzing. And plus they can poke you pretty bad in the eye if you're not careful you do not want the tip of this thing uh, going into your eye. It's, uh, it would be horrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off with my handy little tool that I need to pick back up out of my box here. And then we should be pretty much good to go and to go into that cycle of tuning and then playing letting it sit overnight and kind of repeating that process and should be, you know, throughout the week, these strings will break in and we'll have us a nice uh, sounding guitar that's tuned nicely. Make sure to check your, your pins, make sure they're pushed in properly as well. Um, but really this is it. This is where I'll stop the video. I hope this has been helpful. It's been a fun experience for me to go through this and be able to share this with others in hopes that it could help you if you're looking at replacing the tuning pegs and the machine heads on your acoustic guitar uh, and or if you're just looking to restring your acoustic guitar a little bit of that is baked in here as well i appreciate you guys watching and i'd love to hear from you in the comments if this was helpful uh, and if this is something that you've done with your guitar and how it worked out for you and if you've used this particular brand or if you have a certain brand that you recommend, it could be helpful to share with others. So thanks again for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.